We just had the final days of qualifiers for the $4 million lands, and we are now missing huge names like Clicks and Epic Whale. But we also had some of the players from the small regions absolutely pop off, and a fan favorite, Mr. Savage and Vadil, closing it out in first place at the very end. Let's kick off with the obviously big news. Clicks and Epic Whale not making the finals of the biggest tournament since World Cup, a tournament they both attended. This is obviously an underperformance and a lot of people had Clicks and Epic Whale picked to easily make the finals, potentially going on to do really well in that. And I'm not just saying, you know, fanboys and people who love Clicks' content are Epic Whale and they're just saying they're looking good. They are still a phenomenally good team. So what went wrong? A lot of people keep talking about how they got like, you know, locked into an ego battle. They should have left their job spot. It was terrible their egos got in the way and it just isn't true when i made my video yesterday they were getting contested on the north side of mega city by yuma but yuma ended up leaving the drop spot before the tournament even began clicks and epic whale had the north side of mega city uncontested they had zazzy and aim dropping to their east and they had batman booger and rapid dropping to their south who they're very used to playing around from all of the cash cups now on day one of the qualifiers no real team at mega city outside of grip a and flixie did that well they came top 10 10, which was awesome from the east side but batman booger and rapid didn't qualify from day one on south side now batman booger and rapid went on to come top five today out of mega city on the south side so it can be done so what happened with clicks and epic whale obviously each part of mega city isn't the same and a lot of people tell me the north side of mega city is the worst loot and i can't verify whether that's true or false but it was a weird day for clicks and epic whale they started off really really strong they started off looking really good in their first few games they're only going to need around what we thought was 100-ish points to qualify. Day one was only 91 points to get top 25 teams. So we would have thought on day two, it'd be maybe around 90 or maybe 100 points because day two is easier because you've already taken out the top 25 teams, but they ended up getting 110 points and still didn't qualify by one elimination. That was the difference. If Epic Whale or Clicks got one more kill on the day, they would have come 25th because they would have won the tiebreak over Stain and Datus, and they would have been through to the finals. Their first two games were really good, a four Elim 16th and a two Elim 14th. That was keeping them on track to easily get over 100 points on the day, but they just went down really close to getting those massive more points. Like when you go down in 16th and 14th you've been alive for 24 or 25 minutes and games close out in like 27 or 28 so you are really close to getting a full game out so they just went down when they needed that one refresh then unfortunately they got a zero elim 24th a zero elim 14th and a one elim 21st so i mean if you count that up they got seven eliminations across five games and that obviously was their biggest issue so i know you think aussie what went wrong here and unfortunately i was watching the broadcast they really only showed them when they went down they didn't really show too much leading up to that and it looked like every time they went down their surge was a little bit off they either needed a bit more surge or they had their surge and they had no meds so i don't really know what was going on in their early to mid game that led to this point and i know some people are going to maybe say oh it was terrible zones but they actually got really lucky with the zones i would say if you look at a team like mr savage and Vadil, who went on to win out of noddy one of the worst drop spots on the map a lot of people saying mr savage and Vadil did so well because of such favorable drops three of the five zones went right next to the mountains next to mega city so i'm not really sure what happened here a lot of people if you're watching the broadcast you've probably seen it the servers are struggling a little bit they are they're, they're kind of there's a lot of lag going on a lot of rubber banding but at the same time it's hard to always use that as an excuse or a reason for teams to do poorly because they're all playing under the same circumstances and i want to let this be known clicks feels the same way i messaged clicks saying this i said hey man how you doing he said i'm just struggling at the moment I'm a bit over i put in so much work and had a bad bad result and I said it's rough the servers look terrible but it's hard to complain when everyone's playing on the same servers and he responded with exactly just a bad performance so unfortunately I don't have some greater reason to give you for why clicks and epic whale didn't make the finals they just struggled but clicks said he put in the work coming into this so there's not really anything to blame I guess that's just how Fortnite goes sometimes and I know I'm focusing a lot on one team obviously people are going to say I'm fanboying it's clicks and epic whale they're two of the biggest names in competitive Fortnite a lot of people are still only watching competitive Fortnite these days for clicks and epic whale and i'm a good friend of both of theirs so i'm upset to not see them make the finals but it looks like they're just wasn't their day they only had one chance because they qualified through last chance major so they didn't get to play qualifier one they only had five games to bring it together and it came down to a single elimination 
Now, I don't want to make this all doom and gloom. The finals were still extremely exciting. We have 25 new teams going through into the finals. Four million dollar land taking place today as of you guys watching this video. And we had Mr. Savage and Vadil closing it out in first place. Now, I saw a few people commenting on my stream today saying, Ozzy, you had no faith in Savage and Vadil. You said they probably weren't even going to qualify in your video. That's when they were contested. They were contested by Anon and Sons who were dropping Naughty Nets. I thought there was no way they were going to leave the drop. Anon said they were even VOD reviewing how they were going to play Naughty Nets up until midnight the night before the tournament. So there's no way I knew they were going to leave. Once they did leave though, I knew Savage Vadil would almost definitely qualify. Something would have had to have gone horrifically wrong for this team to not get top 25. But to win it, honestly, I am a little bit surprised. They played really, really well. Vadil pulling off an insane solo clutch win in the sixth and final game. They got a four Elim 11th, a three Elim 13th, five Elim 8th, three Elim 29th, and an eight Elim win incredibly consistent Fortnite. We had the team that I picked to win it in second place, Ages and Kanata, obviously going from not even qualifying day one, getting I think 45th on day one, to now getting second because they're uncontested. If you're going up against Thomas and Malabuka, you're going to perform far worse. But going from 45th to then second just shows how much of a difference being contested by an insanely good team makes. A lot of you guys always talk about they should just leave the drop, they should go somewhere else. Why they get locked into these ego battles sometimes these teams just put all of their time and effort into one drop spot it's all they know and there's no other drop on the map that has this miracle free loot that no one's going for sometimes they've just got to stick it out and it shows how big of a difference it makes in number three we had bryce and chubbs my dark horse coming into this tournament i said they are one of the most underrated teams coming into this fncs three phenomenal placements this year in all of the na fncs's day one they were clearly pretty nervous day two they came out swinging they got a win in their first game they were interviewing them and Chubbs and Bryce did admit they were coming in a little bit nervous so they obviously shook that off brought it back and I really hope they get a top 10 in the finals because I think they're good enough they just have to keep those nerves under control then we had KBM and Ra KBM Rapid and Batman Booga again out of Mega City coming fourth place Quanti and TK in fifth place then we had our highest placing non NA or EU region Nutty and Gabzera in sixth place which was fantastic for Brazil. We had some other Brazil teams up there, Ketos and PH Zin in 11th. And in the top 25, we ended up having a whole bunch of Asia teams, which means every single small region is now going to be represented in the final. We have an OCE team, a Middle East team. I think we have four or five Brazil teams and four of the seven Asia teams that went. So we are going to have at least one team from every region in the finals, which is awesome to see because with the Invitational, with inviting teams directly to the finals out of their region, there are always those people who get upset that they didn't earn the spot like obviously the small regions need to be represented they should be sending players but they can't give as many spots to a region like OCE that has way way less players than EU but they did send some players and Alex and Worthy getting sixth on day one have very clearly earned their spot and now the best of the region gets to represent them which is going to be so exciting to watch for the finals now, let's talk about what to expect coming into the finals. You better be watching it. I'll be live all day on my Twitch channel, same as always. And we have some big, big fights going down on spawn. We have Malabuka, Thomas HD up against Kanata and Ages round two. Remember in the qualifier ones, this went 3-2 Malabuka's way. But Malabuka and Thomas went on to do really well in the three games they made it. Where Kanata Ages, unfortunately, in the two games they made it off spawn, they struggled. But either way, I don't see how either of these teams is going to walk away with a 5-0 or 6-0 Maybe we're going to get like a 4-2. Maybe even one of them splits one of the games. We'll see. But either way, it's going to be about making the most of the games they make it off spawn because neither of them, I think, is just going to absolutely dominate the other team. But we'll have to see. We have Alex and Worthy, OCE's only representation going up against the new crowd favorites, Moneymaker and Finay. And Moneymaker has just blown up recently. I've been getting so many questions about Moneymaker, Ken Bean's coach. And they are going up against Alex and Worthy. It's going to be a very interesting spawn fight to see how that plays out. I don't know which of them is going to have the edge on that fight. It's going to be a tough one. We have Trulex and Chicho going up against Quanti and TK. Both of them phenomenal teams out of South Slappy. They both have a very similar play style. That is going to be a very, very tough one for both of them. Acorn and Cold going up against Vico and Pink. Now, Acorn and Cold won session one while being contested by Vico and Pink. So I have still have no idea how they pulled that off. They almost were going to get the drop spot uncontested in the finals until Vico 
Unicorn Pink pulled off an insane win in one of their games today in day two. Qualifiers managing to push them through. So we're going to see if Acorn and Cole can somehow find that success that they found on session one. We have Poyo and Sphinx going up against Vanyak and Kami. We have MK Papa and Shalom, the Asia team, going up against Stain and Datus, the Asia team as well. They both weren't really figuring out their drop spots. They were all dropping around the map, changing. I expect one of these teams to potentially change their drop spot tomorrow. They've listed like eight different drops on the drop map and they keep changing it. So I don't expect either of them to stay there. We have Kidos and PH Zin up against Robin and Axe Force. We have a three-way split on the north side of the map. Baka Paz versus Yanis Rezon versus Teeny Misha. All three teams going this split because Baka Paz and Teeny Misha both qualified day one means that all three of them are going to be contested. That is going to be super ugly for a split that really is only worth one team. I have no idea how three teams is going to go. We have Booger Threats going up against Peterbot and Byla. Now, a lot of the teams out of the Mythic POIs have been struggling. Booger Threats and Peterbot and Byla both struggled for the most part. I really had high expectations for them, but both of them really qualified off basically one good game. So seeing how they're going to play this fight out and maybe split the drop in the Cash Cup most recently, Peterbot and Byla let Booger and Threats have the vault six games out of six. I say let because obviously Peterbot and Byla are two phenomenal fighters. If they really wanted to fight for the vault, they could, but obviously they've decided it's not the best game plan for them to hold down this fight when potentially if they get a south zone, it is such a long rotate. So I expect there not to be too much fighting between these teams, but you never really know. Honestly, they're both super aggressive. We'll have to see how they play it out. And the rest of the board is uncontested. So big names, Reed and Rituals, Cooper and Mero, Savage and Vadil. These teams are all uncontested. We have teams like Sentinel and Polarized switching up their drop spot to try and find a bit of loot uncontested. Muzz and Paper have now left Breakwater Bay to go just to the east of it to find a spot that they can get, get some loot and be uncontested. We have Snazy and Podesai again going south side of Breakwater. Pretty, oh, sorry, south side of Shattered Slabs. Pretty much everyone else across the board is looking pretty good at this point, but I'm expecting the finals to go insane. We're going to have a lot of teams switch their drops when they start struggling when $4 million is on the line. So expect a lot of fireworks and we could potentially see something as crazy as last year with the Invitational. We have Queasy and Venno uncontested, Camisetti uncontested as two of the favorites. I don't expect to see a second place landing on first. It would just be too miraculous of an occur occurrence to happen twice in a row at the two major lands. But if it's even half as exciting as the last year's finish, it's going to be a big one. Now, remember as well, at the end of the tournament, a lot of people expecting there to be some kind of announcement. What is going on with the new chapter? What is going on with competitive next year? And people keep asking, what do I think the announcement's going to be? I think it's going to stay to be gameplay related. I don't think it's going to be tournament related. I don't think we're going to find out if Epic is switching the game mode to trios or FNCS is switching or competitive's plan. I think Fortnite's going to use it as a chance to kind of give a teaser for what next season is. We've got the throwback season, chapter one, season five coming back. We're going back in time straight into a new chapter, only a one month season. I'm hoping we get some kind of teaser and I'm basing that off the last two major announcements. World Cup at the end of it, they announced season X and then at the end of the Invitational, they announced chapter four. They've used the big tournaments to announce other things for being in the game, not just competitive. So we might get no announcement. Maybe we do get a competitive announcement, but don't miss it. I hope it's going to be exciting.